It's pretty clear that you really enjoyed watching 2021's edition of those flexes. I'm not surprised to be honest. So let's continue to ride the momentum with another treat for you all. Today we'll be having a second list on top anime flexes. However, we won't be confining it to 2021 shows, but instead we're going to focus on another qualifier main characters. Who doesn't like main characters putting on a show of their power? So strap yourselves in and let us take this ride through some of my favorite moments of anime main characters showing off. We start off with Alucard's level zero release. Man, what a moment. Hellsing Ultimate has been full of badass moments, and I think that few anime characters can come close to embodying that concept as Alucard. An overpowered character in his own right already, Alucard takes it up a complete notch with this release moment. Many goosebumps have been raised when Alucard finally enters his full power after a harrowing chant. I think that what makes this thing so awesome is that it encapsulates what Alucard has done to get to this point. Yeah, he's an anti-hero fighting for the side of relative good, but it also sheds light on how Alucard is also so the representation of vileness. Releasing devoured souls to fight by his side is clearly not a good guy move, you know. And at this point, I'm pretty sure Helsing was more than happy that this guy is fighting on their side than against them, because I can't imagine how anyone would feasibly deal with that. <laughs> I also like Shiki Ryogi taking on apartment zombies. Compared to how ridiculous Alucard's level zero transformation was, this one's way tamer. Still, it's a moment to remember from one of my favorite movie series out there. Back in those days though, can you imagine a fight sequence with choreography as silky smooth as this one? Shiki, just armed with a knife, takes on all those apartment zombies and solos them. One by one, many against one, and it didn't even matter how the zombies approached. They're nothing but fodder getting killed and thrown out after one another. Shiki did all of this in a kimono too. She just can't keep herself from looking stylish, even when being a one woman wrecking crew against all those zombies. It's a massacre that looks more like a dance if you ask me. Perfect, just perfect for this deadly beauty. From one cinematic production to another, we have Kirito from Ordinal Scale. Kirito has been called a lot of things. Overpowered is just one of them. But if you step back and take a look, he's nothing more than just a very, very skilled gamer. Yeah, he's had his hacks moments, but he's never really done anything to the realm of, say, one shooting a boss on his own or something. Oh boy, I mean, that all changed in ordinal scale for a moment. After one hell of a climactic boss fight, Kirito and the gang have technically cleared Aincrad, something they weren't able to do before. And the reward from Kayaba's ghost himself, a god sword that puts every weapon to shame. With one swoop, boss monsters back in the concert hall fell like flies. Multiples of them exploded with each swing of the god sword in a moment, which makes me think it's an intentional joke on the writer's part. Oh, you said Kirito's OP. Okay, here you go. God mode for Kirito for 15 seconds. Nothing he ever did in the series comes anywhere close to this absurdity. I mentioned the last moment with some comedic undertones, so how about moving on to Saitama? One of my favorite things about One Punch Man is how it takes the absurdity of overpowered protagonists up to 11. A parody done right, as they'd say. It's been established that Saitama is able to be any villain standing in his way with just one punch, but just how would he fare against a gigantic meteor that ominously looms over the city? Are we really asking that question? <laughs> of course, he easily demolishes that thing in one of the hair-raising moments of awesome madhouse animation. One punch is all he needs before breaking that thing into several pieces. In a hilarious twist, he's still doesn't manage to save the city, which gets pelted into oblivion by the smaller pieces from the giant meteor. Leaving a ruined city in his wake, Saitama's done his job. I mean, hey, the city didn't escape damage at all, but at least it wasn't annihilated by the meteor, right? A lot still happens afterwards, but as far as this moment's concerned, it showed that Saitama's strength isn't only good against villains and intergalactic invaders. Now, while that may be absurd, do you think it can compare to Afro Samurai's bridge scene? 
Saitama crushing a meteor may be a good show of strength, but I think that in terms of choreography, Afro Samurai's flex of his own takes it to a whole new level. I'll probably let the video do the talking in terms of showing just how overpowered Afro is. Meanwhile, I'll just be amazed at the animation and how creative he gets when unleashing hell against those helpless flies. He really did just breeze through everyone while outright demolishing them without even breaking a sweat. I mean, this is just crazy. A river of blood does follow Afro wherever he goes to the point that even something as mundane as crossing a bridge is a chance to showcase more violence and wanton destruction. He does deserve the title of being the world's strongest now, don't you think? You feeling this list so far? If yes, I'd like to ask for your subscriptions. We're making some good headway with the goal of a million subs within the middle of the year, and your subs could be the ones we need to get over that hump and hit that sweet, sweet one million sub milestone. I really would appreciate your help on that one. That's all, let's get back to the list. Let's move on to one of the more traditional shonen titles now, and one thing that I'll always remember is Ichigo throwing Aizen. For multiple arcs, Aizen has been a thorn in the side of the Shinigami. Outsmarting them, overpowering them, it seems that Aizen can never be stopped. With the Hogyoku on his side, it just isn't fair, is it? This guy just spent an entire arc tanking and no-selling everything that the heroes can throw at him, only to keep evolving into a new form. Heck, even death and decay from within wasn't enough to put him down. But then, Ichigo arrives. This isn't just Ichigo, this is Ichigo in peak form, having trained for so long inside the Dan Gai and transcended Shinigami limits. How does he first demonstrate the fruits of his training? By grabbing Aizen and throwing him all the way to the wilderness where their cataclysmic battle can take place. Ichigo pretty much spends the next couple of minutes just stomping and doing Aizen things to the man who flexed on the heroes for the longest time. There's even the whole stopping a sword with a finger thing. <laughs> How's that for payback? Guts versus 100 soldiers is another damn good moment. There's a lot of things people love Berserk for. Chief among those is the scene of Guts just showing off his power. For him, these soldiers charging him is nothing more than a chance for him to prove how ahead he is compared to everyone else. Guts does take some sizable hits here, but none that are enough to even slow him down as he continues his warpath. By the time it's done, what we're left with is nothing short of a slaughterhouse with our triumphant protagonist resting against a tree. With the limitations Berserk had in animation, I'd excuse this scene for not looking like any masterpiece, but I know there's got to be a chance to sneak in a Berserk 2016 joke somewhere. Said limitations don't make the moment any less awe-inspiring though. One of my absolute favourites in the series and an establishing moment for our protagonist. Ainz makes it to the list as he utterly obliterates 70,000 enemies. We've had Isekai protagonists show off their overpowered mess of abilities before, but can anyone have a claim to fame the same way Ainz does? Not too long ago, we had Rimuru taking out an entire army, but are they 70,000? I mean, in terms of sheer scale, this one beats that and it further proves that Ainz is nothing short of a one-man army by his lonesome. With one stroke, Ainz easily commits mass genocide and eradicates the entire army that numbers in the thousands. It's a moment rightfully called Massacre at Katze Plains. Those people were nothing but bugs and small fries to be melted away in the face of Ainz's super magic. I just wish that this moment was adapted better. The CG, while not being a complete deal breaker, did put quite a dampener on things. Nothing but the easiest and grandest showcase of power for our powerful overlord. All hail Ein Summer! And finally, we head to One Piece. Seems like I keep talking about One Piece, eh? Well, I think it's a good way to close the book on the list talking about one of my faves. There's a lot of great moments that evoked a lot of emotions for me, but for the context of this list, Luffy versus Fishman has got to be right up there. The moment has some comedic appeal for me. It may not be played off as a joke scene, but in hindsight, it's hilarious seeing everyone's scared reactions when Luffy just so easily disposes of them all. None of the straw hats even needed to take to the stage even when most of them are getting ready. Luffy just single-handedly wrecks half of them with his conqueror's haki. 
no other super attacks unleashed, no punches thrown, his conqueror's haki is just that strong to deal with an entire army by its lonesome. Quite the memorable moment we have here, if you're to ask me. So, here's the age-long question. Which among these moments is your favorite? If you've got any more suggestions for protagonist flexes, let me hear your thoughts in the comments section below. And before leaving, I'd like to invite you to join my Patreon. Financial support will go a long way in helping me make better videos. And I want nothing more than to give you even better production quality and other perks as well. So I recommend you head onto Patreon and see what all the buzz is about. You can also connect with me through Instagram for the latest news on the channel. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time, we'll meet again.